Around 59% of people in the UK are classified as middle class. And we often associate the middle class with reaching certain goals, like having a retirement fund or owning a house. But in reality, 31% of us Brits are actually living paycheck to paycheck. So where are we going wrong? You may have an all right job, but many people often have nothing to show for it after paying bills. Many people are often unaware of these money traps as they are so baked into their day-to-day -day life and in reality, they often prevent people from reaching their financial goals. So in this video, I'm going to talk about 10 middle-class money traps you need to avoid. If you're new here, then my name's Ollie, and on this channel, we discuss all things related to personal finance and investing. And if you get any value from this video, then I'd really appreciate you smashing the like button as it helps the channel massively to reach more people. Also, don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future updates. Also, please note, I am not a financial advisor and nothing in this video is intended to be financial advice. And if you want financial advice, you should seek a licensed professional. At the end of the day, I am just a guy on YouTube, so you should always do your own research because this video is just for entertainment purposes only and past performance is not indicative of any future results. So now that's out the way, my number one middle-class money trap you need to avoid is not making your money work for you. So firstly, you need to pay yourself first. Take a portion of your monthly salary after you've paid your bills and rent and any other essential outgoings, then set up a standing order to put this money somewhere where it's going to potentially make you more money, like a high interest savings account or investing. And make sure you do this before you start buying non-essential items, otherwise, you'll be susceptible to spending this money. Once you start doing this, you won't even realize the money has left your account because it will be as if you never had it in there in the first place. So leaving your money in a current account will likely not earn you any interest 90% of the time. So you need to work out what is right for you and how much risk you personally want to take. There are different ways to make your money work for you. For example, investing in the stock market, bonds, property, or even putting it in a savings account because right now some bank accounts are offering pretty decent interest with very little risk. Personally, I would avoid property right now as the housing market is going through a correction. Investing is potentially a great way to make your money work for you, but remember investing is higher risk than a savings account as your capital is at risk. But I personally wish I'd known about investing earlier on in life because the earlier you begin investing then the more potential you have to grow money through compound growth. Nowadays, it's never been easier to invest and you can start with as little as $10 at some online brokers. Plus, with the ability to invest from your computer or phone, it's never been easier. Many people think there is a high barrier to entry with investing, but in reality, there really isn't. And you don't even need to know which stocks to pick because you can invest in something called an index fund. For example, if you invest in an S&P 500 index tracking fund, then you buy one stock, which then invests in 500 of the biggest companies on the US market with one simple purchase. So not only does this help for diversification, which means not putting all your eggs in one basket. But what's most insane is that investing in the S&P 500 has historically outperformed mutual funds and beats most professional investors. On average, the S&P 500 returns 7 to 10% per year over a long period of time. So that's not 7 to 10% every year. One year it may be 2%, another year it may be 12%, another year it may be minus 10%. But over a long period of time, it averages out to that. But the best thing about investing is the potential for compound growth. And that's where your interest earns you more money. So say you start with 1K and earn 10% in a year, that's $100 of interest. Then the next year you earn 10% on $1,100. So that year you made $110 in interest and so on and so on. And if you do this over a long period of time, then the interest you make will eventually well outperform what you contributed. For example, if you put $500 a month at a rate of 8% over 30 years, you'll potentially have $745,180 of which you contributed $180,000 and 
$1,180 is earned through interest. If instead you contributed $1,000 a month, then at 8% over 26 years, you would end up with over a million at $1,042,411. So this is why the earlier you start, the better. Even putting the smallest amount away, you will be thankful for later in life. If you want to know how to invest in index funds, then I recommend you subscribe and also check out this video, which I'll put a link to up here and in the description below. But it's worth noting, no returns are guaranteed and your capital is at risk. And right now, the S&P 500 index is down 17% this year. So you need to work out what's personally right for you. But overall, not making your money work for you has never been more important because inflation is so high. Every year, your money is losing its buying power. So ideally, you want to reduce how much money you're losing to inflation, or if you can potentially even beat it. So my number two middle-class money trap you need to avoid actually follows on from number one and that's thinking you can get rich quick. If something is too good to be true, then trust me, it probably is. 99% of people can get rich eventually with hard work and dedication, but this doesn't mean it's going to happen quickly and falling for some get rich quick scheme or investing in risky speculative assets is a surefire way to lose your money. I'll probably get some hate for this, but I would personally avoid investing into the next meme stock or shit coin your mate told you about down the pub and instead invest in something decent that's likely to change the world for the better. This doesn't mean you shouldn't invest in speculative assets, but just don't be YOLOing all your money into them and perhaps only use a small portion of your funds. And make sure to do your own research and understand what you're investing in, as this is another surefire way to lose money if you don't. My number three middle-class money trap you need to avoid is keeping high interest debt. There is literally no point in investing in something that may make you seven to 10% per year when you have credit card debt or other high interest debt of say 20%. Get this paid off first, then start investing. Having high interest debt like this is the opposite of compound interest working for you as instead it's working against you. According to Investopedia, the median rate of interest across all credit cards in their database in November 2022 is 21.99%. If you've got credit card debt, then get it paid off and avoid payday loans like the plague. My number four middle-class money trap you need to avoid is working for less than you're worth. Employers will always pay you the least amount that they can get away with paying you. At the end of the day, their job is to make as much money as possible for the company. So they will always pay you just about enough so that you don't quit. But in reality, if you leave, it's likely to cost your employer a lot more money to replace you and they will potentially have to train someone up. So don't be scared to ask for a pay rise. The worst that can happen is that they say no. I actually had help from a friend who was a recruitment agent and he gave me a framework to go by when asking for a pay rise that actually worked really well for me. So if any of you would like me to do a video on this, then please let me know down below. But in reality though, quite often, the only way to get your employer to give you a pay rise is to get another offer on the table. You never know, you may even prefer the new job. Job hopping is a great way to increase your salary. So even though you may love a company and the people you work with, you've got to decide what you value the most. If you are happy to stay where you are, then you have to realize that your salary may not move massively from where it is unless you get a promotion. In reality, the easiest way to make more money is to switch jobs every few years. Which brings us nicely onto the number five middle-class money trap you need to avoid, and that is being unwilling to make changes and not taking risks. If you really want to succeed, you need to be willing to change. For example, moving jobs, changing careers, starting your own business or moving location. You really need to be open to maximize your income. Many people keep the wrong career because they see it as too much hassle for them to change or they become too comfortable with their current salary that they don't want to risk changing careers and start at the bottom again. But more often than not, these new careers may make more money over the long term. If you're starting a business, you have to think what's the worst that could happen. If it fails, then you could always get another job. Alternatively, if you're thinking of starting your own business, you could start it as a side hustle, then transition into it full time once it makes enough money. That's my plan for this channel eventually. So that's why it's really important to give it a like. If you want some ideas for side hustles that anyone can start, then I highly recommend you check out my other video up here. And I'll also put a link to that in the description below. So my number six middle class money trap you need to avoid is buying a nice house that leaves you house poor. Everyone dreams of having a nice house, but it's easy to buy something too big 
that leaves you house poor, which basically means you spend a large portion of your income on your home, leaving you with very little money to spare afterwards. Many people buy a fancy house as a bit of a status symbol to show they have money and are doing well in life. But more often than not, the people they are trying to impress don't really care. Even if you're not buying a huge mansion, buying a house to the max of your budget may be tempting so that you get the best possible house, but is it really worth it if you have to cut back on other things afterwards? Being house poor is not fun when you can't afford to go on holiday or pay for other nice to haves or even necessities. This has also been exacerbated by the rising cost of living and rising interest rates. Many people have been lucky over the past decade or so with interest rates near 0%, but as they rise to fight inflation, many people on tracker mortgages are finding they are going up quite considerably and leaving them in a difficult situation. And with interest rates likely to rise again in the UK, this pain is unfortunately only set to get worse. So I urge anyone buying a house or anyone already owning a house to consider the impact of rising interest rates. So my number seven middle-class money trap you need to avoid is buying fancy cars. Again, these are a bit of a status symbol and when people start making half decent money, they often purchase a nice car because they feel like they've earned it. So this falls into two categories. Firstly, you don't want to buy a brand new car. Ignoring the past couple of years due to COVID, cars are generally depreciating assets and if you're buying new, then they devalue by thousands the minute you drive them out the showroom. You can literally save thousands by buying a nearly new secondhand car instead. This doesn't mean you should go and buy a cheap secondhand BMW or Porsche either. While you may get a steal on a secondhand luxury car, when they break, you are still going to be lumbered with expensive parts that need replacing. So you should always consider this. The second reason that cars are a middle class money trap is that people often buy them on higher purchase, which is basically a loan to pay for the car. According to NerdWallet, the average person in the UK spends £478 per month on their car with finance. In the US, this is currently $667 according to credit agency Experian. And because interest rates are rising, it's potentially worse than this now with recent reports from Cox Automotive and Moody's Analytics putting the average monthly car payment at $733 per month in July. July of 2022, which is a serious amount of cash. And you need to consider once you've paid this off, the car will only be worth a fraction of what you paid. So I'm not saying don't buy a nice car, but get one within your means. Don't buy new and save the dream car till you can really afford it later in life. My number eight middle-class money trap you need to avoid is overpaying on taxes. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying don't pay taxes because you will end up with a fine or potentially even jail, but taxes are one of our biggest outgoings in life. And governments often offer tax efficient products for people to save money like ISAs, Roth IRAs, 401ks, etc., etc., And they can save you money, so you'd be silly not to take advantage of them. Unfortunately, every country is different here, so you're best speaking to your local tax office or a local accountant to see what's on offer, as you really don't want to break the law here. So my number nine middle-class money trap you need to avoid is not thinking long-term. You really need to set goals on where you want to be later in life and then consider your outgoings. For example, you don't need the new iPhone every year. My phone is three years old, and while the back is cracked, it's still going strong. Or for example, consider the little purchases you make every day, like buying coffee and lunch. While it seems like a small amount, over the course of a year, this can become a large amount. For example, spending five pounds on lunch and coffee every day, with the presumption you work five days a week and 48 out of 52 weeks a year, would add up to 1,000 200 pounds a year. So why not make it at home instead, or even just do this half of the week? My number 10 middle-class money trap you need to avoid is lifestyle inflation, or what's also known as lifestyle creep. As you progress in life, you will at some point likely get a pay rise, and more often than not, people treat themselves because they've earned it. In a perfect world, I would say don't change your lifestyle when you get a pay rise, but life would be boring. So perhaps when you get a pay rise, put half of the increase into savings or investments. That way you're still treating yourself, but also saving more as your salary goes up. Anyway, let us know below which middle-class money traps do you avoid, or if you have any other suggestions, as I'd love to know and read all your comments. 
even avoiding a few of these middle class money traps will really make a difference if you stop doing them. And if you got this far, I want to thank you so, so much for watching. And don't forget to like this video as it really makes a massive difference to me. Also, learning about these middle class money traps you need to avoid is just the start. And in reality, this should get you thinking about how to save more money. So I recommend you watch this video next for how to save 100K fast. It's been Ollie from Get Geeky Finance. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.